another live coming at you from Think Dyslexia. Hello, hello. Let's see, are we requesting to join? All right, here we go. All right, we are waiting for our connection. All right, hi. hello. Hi, Jeanette, how are you? I am well, trying to get this camera set up over here, so. I know, <laughs> cut off. God, it always does that. Yeah, it's, it's the worst, but you know. <laughs> All right, well, let's just like hop right into this. I am super excited to have this important conversation about technology and dyslexia. So everyone that is on this live right now, I am Dr. Lauren. I am the owner of Think Dyslexia. And um, I'm a special educator for all of you who are not aware. And I want to introduce my guest today. So this is Jeanette Washington, and she is an SLP. She is a technology professional. <laughs> she is an author. She is an incredible resource to all of you out there. And she is based in Detroit, Michigan. Ooh, and um, <laughs> you know, yeah, go Detroit. <laughs> and we have been friends for quite some time. We met on Instagram, and we just really um, have a lot of professional mindsets. And, you know, we... <laughs> collaborate and it's been amazing and so we have been able to find this time to put together some questions for the audience so um just to kind of outline for all of us to kind of know where this conversation is going i want to read to you the four questions that we're going to be delving into um just you know i think it will kind of help move the conversation along so all right i've got my paper people all right so i'm gonna be <laughs> looking at all the papers so bear with me She's right. going to be looking at the paper. I'm going to be checking the time. We want to respect your time. We're giving each other 20 minutes and then we're done. It is Saturday. So we get it's it. It's a Saturday. <laughs> exactly. All right. So our first question is, what are, what are the best assistive technology tools for those presenting with dyslexia? And how can technology support dyslexia? So that's our, our first question. Um, our second is, are there digital tools to access dyslexia? Um, the next one is, which dyslexia traits most align with successful tech professionals? I'm looking forward to that answer. And the <laughs> last question is, what would you tell someone with dyslexia watching this um, that is discouraged by the idea of working in the technology industry? So yeah. let's hop right in. Let's hop Those right are in. some great questions. Yeah. So the first question, as it relates to assistive technology, I want to kind of set the stage and make sure that you all are aware of that word. Assistive technology simply means any equipment or software that's used that uh -oh. So think of wheelchairs as um, assistive technology. You can think of reading glasses as assistive technology. You can also look at predictive text as a means of assistive technology. So I want to set the stage there. And then I want to talk about some really awesome assistive technology for those who present dyslexia. So if you um, have dyslexia and you've been diagnosed, you know that your reading, speaking, spelling, and your writing are impacted by dyslexia. So with that in mind, you want to use graphic organizers so that you can stay anchored in your yes. thought process. You want to use potentially speech to text because that's going to help you with the rigor of getting your thoughts onto the paper or the screen. You also want to use text to speech. That is something mm -hmm. that is also essential as we are looking at books and trying to build that comprehension. Uh oh, it looks like we had a little moment where uh, the you know the broadband was out, but <laughs> I, <can still laughs> I was hear saying you that. Awesome. Yeah, audiobooks and text to speech are very helpful yes. because that is going to allow you that time and that energy so that you can comprehend what is what is in front of you. And finally, what I found helpful and I actually learned about this from my friends at um Dyslexia Nigeria is the smart pens or the live scribes. So yes. basically there's some little electronic devices that you can use. It'll read the text for you as you go along and that is 
absolutely a fantastic tool. So again, we want to look at graphic organizers, speech to text tools, text to speech tools, and then like smart pens or uh, live scribes. Those are helpful AT. That's uh, honestly, that's amazing. And I feel like these are some tools that even classroom teachers probably mm -hmm. don't realize could be really helpful, obviously mm -hmm. for students with dyslexia, but also for all students. So I, uh, I really appreciate you sharing those. And I'm sure <laughs> there are people in the audience that probably weren't even aware that those are some great assistive technologies to, uh, yeah. to um, let's. <laughs> She's she's using her paper to get these questions. So I'm gonna be <laughs> I'm gonna be doing the Jeopardy music. <laughs> so I feel like you kind of answered number two. Are mm -hmm. are there digital uh, tools to access dyslexia? So I think you did share that. Mm -hmm. um, could you delve more into the dyslexia traits that most align with the successful tech professional? So what would be a tech okay, professional? Okay, so. The dyslexia traits that most um, align with tech professionals um, is a, one of the great questions that I offered during this interview because I think it definitely falls into the category with my book, Technical yeah. Difficulties, Why Dyslexic Narratives Matter in Tech. I know it's mirrored, but um, yeah. <laughs> the, the quote I have in my book is, technology will only be as good as the person it does the least for. So with that in mind, it is so important to have dyslexics at the table sharing their narratives so that we can create technology that will exceed our own imaginations, right. whether we are typical learning, typically developing, or we're atypical. So some of the traits are going to be innovation. We've seen time and time again how people that fall into that dyslexia continuum are innovators. Um, we look at the fact that they are empathy-led. So they're able to really address problems um, by using their, um, their empathy, by really being intuitive and understanding what needs to go on based on what problems exist. Next, we know that um, in the classroom, those with dyslexia are re-engineering, they're hacking their way to learning because um, oh, no. they understand. Uh -huh. Would you say, Lauren? No, I said, I think there was a connection issue again. Yeah, <laughs> it happens. This is the technology <laughs> age. Oh. <laughs> and we're talking about technology, so it's only fitting. It but, totally uh, <laughs> is. Okay, keep going, keep going. But yeah, to, to do a quick recap, um, we're going to say that some of the traits are innovation, okay. uh, empathy-led design, re-engineering concepts that already exist, and making these concepts more accessible to all, and being solutions-oriented. Those are some major keys when it comes to working in technology. If you have those skill sets, I mean, you can work from the healthcare industry working in, in tech, from urban planning and tech, policy and tech, because we know technology uh, supersedes kind of all of those different realms. So if you are able to bring those dyslexic gifts to the table, and you're all set. So do you delve into all of those in your book? Yes. I do okay. talk about quite a few of them. I have some really cool infographics in my book as well that shows um, those different traits and characteristics that can be beneficial to individuals who are seeking employment in tech. That's excellent. And someone just asked, what's the title of your book? Um, it is called Technical Difficulties, Why Dyslexic Narratives Matter in Tech. And again, I know it's mirrored, but- I'm gonna put it in the chat. If you can, <laughs> if you can kind of steal glimpse that you're all set to go <laughs> well, why totally dyslexic narratives wrong. matter in tech yeah i spelled technical wrong sorry guys <laughs> i will um oh we can't do links on instagram well anyway you can always go to jeanette's page because i know you are always like putting out mm -hmm. commercials for your book so yeah. definitely shoot her a dm for the link because i know you mm -hmm. have it on amazon as well mm -hmm. and thank you to those who are just joining yes. we um have covered a couple topics here so um, we'll have this available to you all. Uh-oh, technology issues again. <laughs> if, you, if you were late joining in, you'll be able to, to see some of this insight later on today. 
Yes, and I am actually going to post this on my YouTube channel as well. So if you are not already subscribing to that, please do. And then you can share this video with anyone that you think might find this helpful. Agreed. So, yes. Um, so what can you tell someone who is watching this or will be watching this later who might be discouraged by the idea of working in the <clears throat> technology industry? So your dyslexic voice and your dyslexic narrative matters, okay? It is very essential that you take the triumphs and the challenges that you've had and you utilize it to help build a better strength-based workforce. So um, as I mentioned, any industry from healthcare to um, biometrics to um, urban planning and, and city policy is going to need your dyslexic voice. And we know that these different industries all evolve around technology. So my um, desire is that you realize how important your voice is and understand that there are people that are not as qualified as you out here uh, doing what you could potentially be excelling at. So um, my book is all about providing that inspiratory, I mean, inspiratory uh, information. And I want to just leave on that note here, but we did miss one question and oh, it, was, it was about... <laughs> <laughs> it was about technology as it relates to um, like assessments. How are people okay. using technology to yes. assess dyslexia? So with that in mind, um, there are tons of screeners out there. Yes. And I want to put this out here as well. You know, a screener is not a diagnostic test. So yes. if you are taking diagnosis that, um, you know, deems you eligible for dyslexia intervention. However, it will provide you with some specific indicators mm -hmm. that can really help paint that picture of how you can learn um, in, in your, you know, learn from your um, differences that you have, that neurodiversity that we talk about. So some of the technology that's available that I'm aware of is neural learning. It's a uh, free dyslexia app and okay. it provides people with um, a great way to kind of get that understanding of whether further testing is warranted. Right. So next Lexercise has a free online um, dyslexia screener. That's, that's really awesome as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, I've been doing a lot of research on this company and I believe it's based in Australia, don't quote me, but it's called Distech. And they have a um, learning algorithm that records your reading and provides you with more insight on whether testing should take place to oh, acknowledge wow. the presence of dyslexia. So there are some really wow. great tools out there, you all. Google is your friend. Don't ever feel or, or Bing or um, <laughs> Go Ducky, yeah. I think is the uh, other search engine, but never feel ashamed to hop on uh, your favorite search engine and check out what exists or just kind of Google me or something and or Google Lauren. <laughs> Absolutely. No, you know what? I, I do want to say that we will, I will be posting um, Jeanette's uh, screener from her barely articulating uh, dyslexia screener on my YouTube channel. So please, please, please later on, I will be letting everyone know when it's premiering, you can click her links, her bios, um, you're on Twitter, you're on LinkedIn. So please, please, she's an excellent resource. And I'm, I'm learning a lot too. I mean, you Yay! really are a professional. <laughs> Go facilitate events. I love to, um, to do my research. So I'm well versed in the technology as it's evolving because as we're speaking, somebody is creating some type of tool that is gonna assist us all. So um, yeah. <laughs> just always be learning. That's, that's a mindset. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so this, this was super beneficial and um, amazing. I mean, is there anything else we should touch on? I think we kind of touched on everything. <laughs> um, <laughs> bing, bing, boom. <laughs> we, we, may, we may have to do an, uh, another one, you know? We might have yeah. to hit you all with an encore. But just let us know in the 
Uh, hit us up. Give us a line. Drop us a line. Drop if us you... a line. <laughs> let us know. Drop us a line. We can, um, you know, let us know. And I think for our Instagram audience, I don't know, Jeanette, I think maybe we should put out some uh, collaborative posts. We Somebody may have to. Me. Yes. I'm, yes. I'm seeing a lot of hearts. I don't I'm I don't know. <laughs> yes, I think we would and I think it would be helpful for people to have this in writing to kind of remember some of the key points, some of those apps that you suggested. So I think that that would be an excellent idea. For okay. Sure. Well, thanks for having me. It was yeah. a absolute pleasure being on your platform, your stage. Yes, thanks thank for you. for letting me up. Absolutely. Thank you for finding the time and sharing your wealth of knowledge with everyone. This was amazing. All righty. So I think our 20 minutes is up, you guys. You it all? is. So <laughs> let us know if you want more. But thank you for coming. And um, I will be posting this live on my page. So everyone have a good rest of your Saturday. Yes. Enjoy your day. I don't know where you are, but the sun is out. It's finally here. <laughs> So. <laughs> yeah, it, it is here too. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. All righty. Bye bye.